All righty, everybody. It looks like we are now live on Facebook Live. So uh, first, I would just like to welcome everybody on Facebook to our September Educational Cafe. This month, we are really lucky. We get to, um, hold on just one second, let me fix this. We're really lucky. We get to uh, take a, some time and talk to our Albuquerque Street Connect team about some of the incredible work that they're doing out in the field. Um, while they're talking, you know, be thinking and coming up with questions, anything you're curious about at the end, we're going to have a little bit of time to be able to talk uh, to each of our teams and uh, answer a couple questions. But right now, what I actually want to do is start off with a video. Um, so it's uh, just a little video to introduce the Street Connect program and some of the work that our navigators get into from day to day. Today I got to spend some time with Leland, one of Heading Home's Albuquerque Street Connect navigators. And I wanted to get a better understanding of how his work gets done. So we grabbed the van and hit the streets. Albuquerque Street Connect navigators never have a typical day. The complex needs of their clients are constantly changing and the intense case management that our navigators perform needs to remain agile. Our first stop of the day is dropping a man off at a rehabilitation center. He volunteered himself to go, a huge first step and will continue to assist him when he leaves. Leland's caseload is about 15 people, and today we have several more stops to make. So it's back to the van. Leland is on the Southeast team, so he primarily works in this area of Albuquerque. Albuquerque Street Connect works with the most severe cases of chronic homelessness, and all the clients served have some form of mental illness, often with comorbid behavioral disorders or physical injuries. Nearly half of Albuquerque Street Connect clients suffer from five to 16 chronic conditions each, at the same time, clients have a high prevalence of acute conditions, most commonly in areas of injury or poisoning, musculoskeletal problems, skin diseases, and behavioral health. All of Albuquerque Street Connect's clients' top 10 chronic conditions relate to behavioral health, with schizophrenia being the most common. <coughs> Leland and I stopped to visit one of his clients, a U.S. Marine Corps veteran. To protect our client's privacy, these conversations aren't filmed. He greets Leland at the door, they talk for a bit about some upcoming appointments that the client has, and we're back on the road. Albuquerque Street Connect uses a data-driven approach to finding and engaging the most vulnerable and highest utilizers of emergency services to ensure that we're engaging people for whom the traditional outreach methods have not worked. Our next stop is at a park in the area to look for a client who's been evading Leland for some time, running away from him when they see the van. We don't give up though, says Leland. I know where they generally like to be, and I'll ask around to see if anyone has seen them. After a navigator has established a connection with the client, they begin the process of stabilization. Mental illness is difficult to treat, and it's even more difficult if it's compounded by multiple chronic conditions and physical injuries. So we begin to address those needs. Albuquerque Street Connect is so effective because they understand how to engage folks that are difficult to engage, says Presbyterian psychiatrist Dr. Abrams. If you need a pair of socks, that's what I'm going to do first. Housing First is an approach to ending homelessness by finding people housing, you guessed it, first. With a safe place to stay, our clients are able to pursue their own personal goals and think beyond where they're going to sleep that night. After a navigator has helped the client achieve some form of stability, we begin the process of transitioning them into permanent housing by helping them access some of their benefits, like disability or social security. Leland and I head to our last stop for the day, an apartment complex that works with our program, and we need to check on three clients here before heading back to the office. Our downtown Street Connect office acts as a home base for the teams. It has emergency supplies for clients and resources to get people their lives back, or perhaps a new one. Albuquerque Street Connect is just another way heading home is making homelessness rare, short-lived, and non-recurring. And we couldn't do it without our navigators. Today, And so that's just a little uh, brief uh, video we put together about some time I got to spend with Leland uh, out in the field and um, just get to know a little bit about what uh, navigators day-to-day -day is like. Um, but that's you know, my experience with it. I want to talk to the experts. That's who I want to talk to. So we're really lucky. We have the entire team here today. Um, and so I want to first introduce the team leaders. So uh, Jody Jepson is the executive director of the Street Connect program. So hi, Jody. Hi, team. Hi. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah. Um, so she's the she's the the mastermind behind the whole program. It's been here since day one <laughs> and uh, since before day one, really. And um, I also want to introduce Honor, who is our clinical director for the program. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do, Honor. 
Yeah, thanks. Um, so I oversee kind of the mental health components um, to our work. So that includes completing the biopsychosocial assessments for intakes um, to kind of help identify needs and get them plugged into um, whatever services they might need. Um, sometimes that involves, you know, crisis intervention, safety assessments, things like that too. Um, and then I serve as a liaison between just community agencies, um, hospitals, law enforcement, um, to help coordinate care, um, and then providing supervision and support for our navigators. Well, that's awesome. Um, and she is also uh, helps the UNMH team quite a bit with a lot of their work. Um, Lindsay Fox is our medical director. She'll be joining us in a little bit. Uh, she has running just a tiny bit late. And the other uh, key staff member in the office is Judy Bartlett, who does the date, who's our data manager. So she's who crunches the numbers uh, and uh, gives people their assignments. <laughs> no, um, that's a team effort. Um, so, you know, we can move right into it. I think that uh, the best thing we can do here is just talk to the navigators themselves. So the first ones that I want to- I don't, oh, yeah. mean to I don't mean to interrupt you, Nick, but we got one, uh, one of the most, uh, <laughs> A critical important roles is Jen Martinez, who's our program director. Oh, sorry, I uh, I saw Jen Martinez's <laughs> name on the list of all the navigators. And I oh yeah, yeah, over. sorry. Yeah, Jen, yeah, no, I'm so sorry. Uh, Jen, tell us a little bit about your role uh, over at Street Connect. Oh, you're on mute. Oh, you need to be. Yeah, sorry, you need to unmute. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Uh, okay. So the program director, um, I'm just I. I kind of try to help everybody, navigators, day-to-day -day operations, um, try to create pathways, um, regardless if that's, you know, something as simple as trying to get an ID all the way up to trying to get them safely housed somewhere. And then just providing supervision as needed. Um, so yeah, that's great. All day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah, no, it's a, a point of contact for everybody. Uh, that, you know, that's, that's incredible. Um, so, I also, uh, on the call here, I want to introduce, uh, you know, Cody, who has become our, he's the roamer, <laughs> uh, right? So um, he helps whoever needs help and whichever team needs help getting somebody to appointments, picking people up, making sure that what we do um, with Street Connect is called a hot transfer. So when somebody gets discharged from somewhere, we're there to pick them up. And so Cody helps with the teams with that a lot. Um, and uh, so thank you so much, uh, everybody, for being here. Let's Jump on over to Shelby and Luis. Um, they are the UNMH navigators. Uh, they can tell you a lot more about their day to day than I can. So I'm going to hop right on over to them. So Shelby what, uh, and Luis, uh, tell us a little bit about what you do. Hi, I'm Shelby Sims. And I'm Luis Martinez. Thank you guys. And we are the UNMH contracted team through Heading Home ABQ Street Connect. Um, I'll go into a success story. We have a young lady, uh, she's 28 years old, that was referred by the emergency department from UNM Hospital. Um, she was taken to the Westside Emergency Housing Center, which is also a shelter through Heading Home. Whew, I'm nervous, I can't breathe. Well, um, it's okay. <laughs> you got this, Shelby, you got this. <laughs> and during my first engagement with the client, um, I couldn't even really get her to say a word. She was very... She looked at you with like a blank stare. There wasn't much in there. She had been through a lot of trauma. She was just, you could tell she was in pain. She was hurting. Um, uh, but as time went on, uh, not much change. She continued to use drugs and wouldn't say much. And then she got kicked out of the shelter. And while she was on the streets, I tried to locate her and I couldn't until she ended up in psych emergency services at UNM hospital and she called me and she was ready to change. And I picked her up from the hospital. And now, I mean, she's stabilized on meds. She's been sober for three months and she's living in a group home and she's doing great. I mean, she's doing wonderful. She's a totally different girl. She laughs and she dances and she has a full blown conversation with you. Um, it's incredible. Yeah, it's amazing to witness. And I yeah. will let Luis finish, finish off. Thank you, Shelby. Yeah, so the UNM team, we provide case management for 30 of the highest utilizers in, of psychiatric emergency services and the emergency department. We work towards psych, psychological, mental health, uh, documentation, housing, as well as finances for our clients. 
Um, as a navigator, you meet with the client where they are, wherever they might be, whether it's an alley, a hotel, yeah. group home, or the, or the, the streets. Um, the team itself, we, we provide all transportation needed to the client. Um, uh, that includes any and all appointments. It might include going to the store to get clothes or to go get a hot meal. Um, and sometimes even help provide smaller things such as socks or cigarettes. Yeah, well, that's awesome. You know, I mean, uh, so when you're seeing people, this is, you know, I'll save my questions till the end, actually. Well, I won't do that. I just, I always have so many questions for you. Your work is fascinating to me. Um, so that's awesome. So the UNMH area, you two, what, uh, do you work specifically with people who come through the UNMH uh, system and they're referred to you or, or is that, and so that's the, or is it an area? So they, they give us a list. Um, mm -hmm. They give us a list every, every year. And these are the people that are coming the most with the most visits and most utilizations. And it's all over. Mm -hmm. We're in the Southeast. Some of our clients are downtown. Some of our clients are on the West side. Um, okay. They're basically all over the place. We meet them. Yeah, you, they're all over. You guys fill out a lot of mileage forms. We do. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, well, thanks, Shelby and Louise, for telling us about some of the work you guys do with the UNMH uh, team. Um, we're, let's move over to Josh. Uh, Josh is uh, on the Valley team. And so I just want to hear a little bit about what's going on down there. Yeah, I'm Josh. Um, I'm part of the Valley team. I'm partnered with uh, with Kat. Kat helps me out. Yeah, uh, she helps me out. I'm sorry, she helps me out a lot. Yeah, um, Kat, uh, you can say hi too. I know I saw you in here as well. <laughs> hi, Kat. Hey. Um. So yeah, I, I help with uh, with all the high utilizers in the in the Valley area. Um, I have a couple officers that that refer. A lot of clients that that they they think is a, a good uh, a good referral to our program. Yeah. Um, a couple of those officers are Officer Montoya and Officer Chavez. Uh, right. They they really help us out a lot, and they go out there with us uh, at least once a week to engage with our clients. Especially um, like this past week, we had a we had a client that's pretty aggressive, so it was really nice to have the officer present with me to disengage with them. Um, yeah, we, I have a I had one client um, that was re really referred to the officers. They had a, a really large encampment that was right in front of St. Martin's on Third and Summer, and he uh, he definitely was um, was suffering a lot in that area, and he was uh, connected with a lot of resources with St. Martin's that kind of was like on jeopardy because he wasn't even really doing anything. He wasn't participating too much. And uh, I got in contact with St. Martin's. They were able to, uh, to let me day by day work with him and get him there directly to appointments, uh, making sure that he does what's needed. So he's able to, uh, to successfully get housed on his housing vouchers. And that's exactly what happened. He got housed on a housing voucher and he's up in a, in a pretty nice complex and he's, uh, he's doing really well now. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And so that's a super positive outcome. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, that's, if there's a program that produces 180s, it has to be this one. You know, I mean, you guys are really do, uh, really making some miracles happen out there. And uh, Kat, why don't you tell us a, a little bit about the, some of the work that you've done in the Valley as well? So one of my greater success stories is with a young woman. She's actually in her early 30s, um, has a quite lengthy arrest record. <clears throat> Excuse me. And she... Um, was referred to us by the Valley Police. Uh, she had been spending, gosh, I think it was about two years where she was living at Coronado Park and causing a lot of issues there. Um, so she came to us as a referral from them. Um, before that, she was homeless about 10 years. Um, I think the most successful part when I think about this particular client is that she is no longer using meth, which is huge. Um, we have since got her housed. Um, she's got health benefits now. She's got, she received SNAP benefits. We're actually waiting for her social security benefits to start paying out. Um, so she's an overall success. Um, she comes from a seriously um, traumatic background where she suffered a lot of abuse of all kinds, had her children removed, 
Um, we've since taken her, um, as Louise mentioned earlier, it was all about meeting them where they're at. Um, so we've gotten her to um, a variety of appointments to include medical and psychiatric. So we're looking at those things and where she might need help and how to navigate all that stuff. Um, so I consider her probably one of my greater success stories. Mm -hmm. I'm super proud of her. And she's, she has been completely compliant with the program, mm -hmm. which definitely makes it easier for us. Yeah, definitely. I imagine with a lot of the mental illness that you work with, um, that uh, many clients can vary on their participation in from day to day. Um, so uh, thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate that. Um, and just a quick question for you. Uh, where, where is the area of the valley uh, specifically? What, what kind of area? Oh my gosh, it's quite widespread. We seem mm -hmm. to do a lot, or the majority of our work around the Coronado Park area. It's also known as the train park. Um, I wish I had coordinates for you. It's quite large. Jody, are you familiar with the area or like how it spans? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I, I don't exactly either. I, I want to say uh, a little past Montano, maybe um, to probably over past, um, I want to say the bridge actually is Valley. I don't know um, as far as. Um, All the way to the Rio Grande too, I think is yeah. what they. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think. Yeah, and what we've seen with the Valley um, officers, um, they are the, the bike officers. And so they're really, their corridor tends to be more of the Coronado Park mm -hmm. underpasses. And when we first met with the commanders and the lieutenants, that really seemed to be the problem uh, location um, that they really felt that we could have an impact with. So we're, we're, yeah. that's kind of where we're at right now, but, right. But, that, but, but that can change. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a large area too. I imagine it can make finding your clients a little yeah. bit difficult sometimes. <laughs> yes. quite um, this is quite too, just, Nick, a really cool piece. Yeah. In addition to the weekly meetings that we have with our police officers in the Valley, um, mm -hmm. they have been awesome by way of keeping in contact with us via text. Um, if it's a day that we're not meeting, they will shoot us a text if there's someone out there who they think is in dire need. And again, we'll go out and meet them where they're at and assess and do what we can to get them moving in the right direction. Well, that's incredible. You know, I mean, that seems like an incredible working partnership. Um, I know that a lot of the program wouldn't be as successful without it, but it, it is just great to know that they're helping out so much. Um, before I hop on over to Jennifer, who's a navigator for the downtown, I wanted to very quickly remind everybody who's watching that if you have any questions, um, post them in the comments on Facebook, post them in the chat here in Zoom. And we'll have a little bit of time afterwards um, that we can talk to our navigators about it. So I want to jump on over to Jennifer. Jennifer is a navigator for the downtown area. And I just uh, was it's seeing what she can tell us about some of the work she does in downtown. Uh, yes, yeah, so I work the downtown area. I've been working with two other individuals on, with the downtown team. Uh, Jason's not available today, but also Cody helps me out a lot. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. anybody who shows up in the downtown area needing services ranging from uh, bus tickets, uh, needing meals, needing clothing, we reach out and assist them uh, right on the spot, get them into uh, temporary housing and then work with them from there. Temporary housing being uh, set up in a, on a voucher in a motel typically. Uh, I have two success stories I'd like to mention. Yeah. I call them client A and client B. They both have TBI, polysubstance abuse and schizophrenia. Uh, no supports. Uh, engagement started around March or April, and they're both APD referrals. Uh, mm -hmm. From initial referral, uh, the first client, I immediately had him inpatient at UNM. He had multiple hospitalizations, was a high utilizer, high acuity, uh, you know, never had really had a lot of support space. I uh, was able to get him a NEFWAC assessment, a CNI, CNA transferred over to Central Desert. He had several assaults on healthcare workers uh, and multiple refusals for group homes. From there, I got him placed into a group home uh, where he has now been since July. And we've had, we've still had some incidents, but there've been a lot of successes with him. He's a different person. He is, uh, has a treatment guardian. He's stabilized on medications. Um, he has a psych C PCP uh, as well as case, case management and wraparound services. Uh, also in the process of getting him a guardian. The other one, uh, same, similar story. Uh, he had court records, 59 court records ranging from 97 to 2019. 
uh, possession, trespassing, indecent exposure, public intoxication. When I first started working with him, he was literally drinking gasoline and didn't have any services in place. I uh, was able to get him again over into a motel and a voucher. And then from there, worked with him and got him initially into temporary housing at an apartment uh, in May. And then in July, I mean, yeah, July, I was able to get him into a group home. He now has a court-ordered injection, a treatment guarding, stabilized with dental, PCP, psych, wraparound. He has hobbies. He is learning how to cook. Um, he has staffing in his home in case management, and he's also in the process of obtaining a guardian. And there's been zero incidents since placement. Um, in that is incredible. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. So I'm pretty proud of my guys. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That is absolutely wonderful. Um, well, great. Um, so now to the uh, Southeast team. I, uh, this is, I actually, Leland is who I got to uh, spend some time with when I was out and running around with them. And so this is Leland and Marlene. Uh, they're the Southwest Navigator team. And I just uh, hop on over to them, see if they can give us a little bit of info about what they're doing over in the Southeast. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Leland. I work with the Southeast area. Um, I just um, really enjoy my job. Um, I really like working with the clientele we work with. Um, I'm going to turn it over to my partner, Marley. Let her talk a little bit. <laughs> Thanks, Leland. Yeah. Hi, but I'm Marlene. I'm also a Southeast Navigator with uh, ABQ Street Connect under Heading Home. Um, we partner up with the Southeast APD officers more directly with Nathan uh, Bjork, but we do uh, deal with the other Southeast officers as well. Um, one of our success stories is one of our first referrals from APD. He was a client who had degenerated lots of um, high call for services with highly acute psychiatric needs, um, who has experienced homelessness. When engaging, uh, when we engaged with the client that the officers referred, um, the number of calls of service went back as far as 2016. The client had history ranges from behavioral health incidents to disturbance to assault on police officers. After Leland had engaged with the client um, and he, Leland was able to create a pathway to permanent housing, the services for calls have stopped. That's incredible. I mean, that's yeah. the idea, you know, uh, we, if people are getting their needs met, then they're not going to need emergency services as frequently. And I think that's a huge yeah. part of the program. Yeah. And um, we didn't even got him his idea as well. So yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Well, I, I had to get my idea a couple of years ago and I needed like four documents and three different appointments. Mm -hmm. So that can't be easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and it's so, a little harder because our clients don't have anything. So we yeah, have to start from scratch. It's, right. Not even an address or a place to get mail. Mm -hmm. It can be really yeah. hard. Mm hmm. Well, I really appreciate uh, you guys all sharing. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I think all these success stories, you know, they're just immensely valuable. Um, so I'm gonna jump straight on over and do a, a couple questions. You know, everybody, this is our Street Connect uh, Navigator team and their support team. And um, the first question I wanna ask is, is for Jody. And I just was curious, Jody, if you could give us just a really brief history of the program, uh, you know, from how it started, and you know, where it is now. We'll try to make it really brief. So yeah, so the, um, so the model really uh, came to, based out of the work through Albuquerque Heading Home, the initiative that was um, a model uh, based out of, it's, it's a national model to house individuals who are chronically homeless with medical vulnerabilities. And that really made sense as you create a by name list with folks who are extremely vulnerable and you start to engage and prioritize them and uh, create pathways for housing. And through, through those efforts um, in doing that work, it really became really, really clear for me that there's actually a subpopulation of individuals who are experiencing homelessness, who lack um, cognitive functioning and capacity to really navigate day-to-day -day, um, skills, right? To even from taking a shower or where to get food, or these are unfortunately are the individuals in our community who we might see on our street corners where it's a hundred degrees outside and they have layers and layers of clothes on and who are screaming and yelling and, and um, not, you know, who 
might have a diagnosis of schizophrenia or um, something else there. So it really, um, it was really important. I felt that we as a community and an agency to really take a look at that and to, and, um, to start to help out. So we started a pilot um, where we just served five individuals um, specifically in the downtown. Um, referrals came directly from the officers down there who we built a, built a relationship with. And these folks um, had generated um, high calls for service who potentially were harmed to themselves or to somebody else or the community. And through that pilot program, we were able to successfully transition them all into environments where they could have a quality of life and start to stabilize and thrive. And so we took that and we were able to go to city council and um, make a proposal to fund our program. And so the first year of operations, we got funded um, to have two navigators, um, a clinical director and, and myself. And from there, um, um, it was another really critical piece of that is data. So we know that data drives so much and we really wanted to show the impact that we were having. And so if, if, if the data is not showing that we're having a, an, an outcome for the community, decreased calls for decreased calls for service, then there's really no point in us continuing to do our work. Um, so um, with all the efforts and hard work and building these relationships within our community, we have uh, continued to have the outcomes. Um, so yeah. from there, we're on year um, four and um, our budget has expanded and, and by, by um, through the support of the city um, and the police department and UNMH, you're now looking at this amazing group of navigators who um, day in and day out are out there. Um, I say the daily grind, cause that's what they do day in and day out. And I'm um, just so proud of all of them and, and, and all that they do. And especially for yeah. the leaders, especially for the leadership team too. I think I just saw Lindsay Fox um, uh, kind of hop on too. So that's, that's kind of how it all started. Um, and we're, I don't think we're going to stop it anytime soon. So it's just great. Yeah. Well, you know, um, any program that produces data good enough that you can quadruple in three years has to be pretty good data. <laughs> so they must be liking the numbers they're saying, you know, that's absolutely incredible. Um, yeah. Lindsay Fox did join our call. So Lindsay is the medical director for the team. Um, and if you wanted to introduce yourself, Lindsay, you can, <laughs> how you doing? Is she here? Is she in the call yet? Just saw her. She might have dis well, disappeared. Maybe, she, maybe she got disconnected. I know that she was, uh, you know, she was potentially not being able to make it. Maybe that's the case. Um, hey, Nick. So, um, yeah. Nick, if you don't mind, I really just wanted to share one other thing, which I think was really important. So we're we're yeah, absolutely a, we're a low barrier program, and what that means is we don't have qualifications. We serve anybody and everybody in regards to um, uh, we don't have rules or um, in, in regards to recovery. And Jen, I don't, yeah. Jen Martins, I don't know if you want to uh, touch on that a bit, but um, we're extremely a low barrier program. Right. Jen, it's a, it's a, I, all of Heading Homes per, uh, programs try to be low barrier where yes. we allow, um, we allow anybody who's ready uh, to enter a service, to ask for help, to, to do that, um, regardless of their situation, their sobriety, uh, various uh, aspects like that. It's housing first. And it's like we touched on in the video a little bit where um, the first step to helping somebody who is experiencing homelessness is to give them a home. So, and uh, that's Street Connect's first step oftentimes is finding them a place to stay, a place to start putting their things, <laughs> getting back to normal. Um, so yes. I do have one question from chat uh, that I want to address before we run out of time. And so I think this is probably a question for one of the leadership team. Um, but Arliana, who's in our chat, asks, um, there's a homeless woman in my neighborhood. I've tried to get help for her. I often hear her yelling. I believe she has schizophrenia and is an intravenous drug user. Can your program help her? is the question. And I know that it works on a referral basis, but would anybody like to offer some advice or maybe some steps or anything? Or um, yeah, I'll just let you guys take it it's out of my field. Ah, 
This is really tough because the need is so high in our community and I'm sure everywhere, um, especially homeless now there's, I mean, it, you know, um, this is tough because the, the, the program model is specific to take um, internal referrals from Albuquerque Police Department of who they've identified that creates um, and generates high calls for service. And then the other entryway is through the um, UNMH hospital. So we don't do um, an outreach where we go out and walk, um, do like a roaming outreach and engage folks to start that uh, process. That being say, said, um, that does not mean that there aren't resources in our community where we can, um, we can reach out to and support them and maybe, um, maybe see if this person has generated calls for service and the police department just hasn't made that referral yet. So um, I would recommend if you could leave an email um, and then myself or Jennifer Martinez, the program director could reach out and we could see um, what that could look like to help that person in the neighborhood. Yeah, great. Um, there are a, a couple different outreach uh, programs in the city too that do engage mm -hmm. people and let them know of service information, uh, shelter information, different uh, programs they have access to. So um, if you, if she's there very frequently, <laughs> Uh, then you could potentially reach out to uh, another program, then they could perhaps uh, offer some information to her. Um, Great. So I, that brings us to five o'clock. We're one minute over time. I just uh, really wanted to thank everybody who's watching for watching. Uh, the Albuquerque Street Connect team has exploded in the last three years. It's a really su uh, successful program. It's growing. It's helping more and more people every year. And I'm sure that it's going to continue to. If you wanna keep up with the program, anything else heading home, get involved as a volunteer, make a donation, any of these things like that, the best place to go is to our website at headinghome.com. Um, and otherwise you can call us here at the office. Uh, so feel free to do that. Um, also, and this is a reminder I like to give, if you have a vehicle you wanna donate, you can donate to One Community Auto and designate heading home as a recipient. And if you want it to go to Street Connect, you can say you want it to go to Street Connect. That's you know, we can do what we can do there. Um, so I would just say again, thank you everybody for coming and stay tuned for next month. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, we'll see you thank next you. time. Bye. Everybody. Uh, thank you.